Well, it does so uh, wonderfully portray what we're celebrating this time of year and the very scripture that uh, they referred to more than once. Uh, we're told unto us a, a child is born and unto us a son is given. The son wasn't born. He existed from eternity past. The child, the body was born, but the son was given. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray and believe the Lord for the next few minutes and whatever he would speak to our hearts about this, this great thing that has been done for us, this great gift that's been given us. Father, we ask you that you would open our eyes and our ears and heart and mind and help us to see clearer than ever before what you have done for us in giving us the greatest gift of all, what this means now and for our future. And we ask that you'd give, give utterance and anointing and the manifesting and moving of your spirit and all of us, ears and hearts and mind that can perceive and see and know and receive. And we pray, Lord, that you would be even more seen and more exalted, more glorified in our lives uh, moving forward than in times past. And that what you have done and what the gift you've given to the world would be seen in us and through us to the world. In Jesus' name we ask it and we thank you for it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I won't have you to turn to too many scriptures today. I'll just, uh, uh, they'll put them up on the screen for us. But the scripture that we referred to that the children so uh, wonderfully recited, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and it's, it's clear who he's talking about. His name shall be called Wonderful. Somebody say Wonderful. He is wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful is, you're full of wonder at the gift, at how marvelous, how wonderful the gift is. In John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world that he what? He gave his only begotten son. Every one of those words are important. Before uh, Jesus, excuse me, before the new birth was available, uh, Jesus, the Son of God, was the only begotten Son of God. And this is the gift that has been given to us. At that time, God's only begotten Son. How great a gift is that? I think only a, a parent could begin to appreciate the value of such a gift. Uh, can you imagine uh, being willing to give your child uh, to deliver or save somebody that didn't even care about you? Or how about giving up your child for someone that actually hated you? This is a love that's not found just among mankind. This is a divine love. This is the love that God is. A love that passes understanding. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Jesus is called, the, the, the child that was born, the son that was given, is called the heavenly gift. Let me read a couple of scriptures to you. Hebrews 6, 4 talks about tasting of the heavenly gift. Uh, Jesus said, you know, there at the well to the woman, he said, if you knew the gift of God and who it was that said, give me to drink, you would have asked of him and he would have given you living water. And then he said in Romans 6, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We're saved by grace uh, through faith. Uh, that not of ourselves, the scripture said, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Everybody say, the gift of God. The gift of God. The gift of God. When you say, Jesus is the gift of God, you're also saying eternal life. 
because this life is in him. This life is in, the life is in the blood. And he came and gave, shed his blood for us. And he gave us himself. And in so doing, he gave us eternal life. And it is a gift. Somebody say a gift. A gift. A gift. You could say the gift. The gift. In 2 Corinthians 9, I want to read this and give you just several translations of it because it's so uh, outstanding. 9.15. 2 Corinthians 9.15. This whole 8th and ninth chapter is talking about the giving of an offering. The giving of a big offering that was going to uh, uh, the saints in a church that were experiencing some hard times. And so it was a substantial gift, and it was a gift that he, he described toward the last part of this chapter that was going to move them. Not only would their need be met, but they were going to respond in abounding thanksgiving to God. You know, there's, a, there, there's something so God about genuine heartfelt giving. Hmm? It's when, when somebody gives you something, especially something valuable, they're proving they care more about you than they do that. Right? It's a, it, when it's done right, it's an expression of love. And it's expression of your value. And uh, he, he, he was talking about uh, this great gift that was going to be given to these poor saints at this church. And then he, he sums it up by saying, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. When you get to talking about gifts, you wind up at the greatest gift that's ever been given. Well, unspeakable, what does that mean? Unspeakable gift. Let me read some other translations. The Darby says, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. The NIV says, um, their hearts will go out to you, verse 14, because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The New Living says, thank God for his son, a gift too wonderful for words. <laughs> Don't you like that? Uh, one says, Thanks be unto, uh, praise be to God for what he's given, which words have no power to say. His unspeakably precious gift, too wonderful to describe. The Amplified says, now thanks be to God for his gift, precious beyond telling, his indescribable, inexpressible, free gift. <laughs> Do you believe this is true? Come on, say it out loud. Thanks be to God. For his gift. Precious beyond telling. His indescribable. Inexpressible. Free gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think that says it the best we know how to say it in English, but it still don't say it. Right? Because it's indescribable, inexpressible, free gift, free gift. Now, we're going to see this term uh, in just a moment in other verses, free gift. Just by nature of the word gift, it implies free, but he wants you to know uh, twice over, it's a free, free. <laughs> hmm? What does that mean? Well, if you look up the words, it has to do, uh, a true gift has to do with something that is not deserved, it is not earned, and it is not repaid. Did you hear those terms? Yeah. Said out loud, not earned. And not, repaid. and not repaid. Unearned and unrepaid. Otherwise, it's not truly a gift. And what God has given us is a true free gift. Somebody say free gift. Free gift. In Romans, the fifth chapter, let me read this to you. Romans chapter five. Man, this is so, uh, so obvious in this passage. I'm reading in verse 6, 
the easy to read version. Then I'm going to read some other things. It says, Christ died for us when we were unable to help ourselves. <laughs> we were living against God. But at just the right time, Christ died for us. Very few people will die to save the life of someone else, even if it's a good person. Amen. Now, let me just ahead right here. And how many fewer would give their child? <laughs> right? right? You might die yourself, but are you going to give your child up to die for that? Someone might be willing to die for an especially good person, but Christ died for us while we were not good persons, we were still sinners. Amen. What kind of love are we talking about? And by this God showed how much he loved us. Hmm? We should never, never should you question God's love. And say, God, are you there? God, do you love me? And prove to me that you, he already has. Amen. He's proved beyond any shadow of a doubt how much he loves me, you, the whole world. God so loved the world that he what? Come on, what did he do? Didn't say, you know, telling someone I love you is good, but it's not the greatest expression of love. Didn't say God so loved the world that he yelled from heaven, I love you. What's the greatest expression of love? Giving. Giving. And the greatest love that has ever existed gave the greatest gift that's ever been given. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And do you know who he gave it to? Yes. Then you are the most loved that's ever been loved. I don't think I've ever said those three phrases just like that. <laughs> the greatest love that's ever existed gave the greatest gift that's ever been given. What does that mean? That means you're the most loved that's ever been loved. You should feel so secure. You should feel so established. God has established your worth and mine by giving the greatest thing that's ever been given. But you know, there's two sides to gift giving. Even though a gift is given, it has to be received, right? It doesn't automatically benefit the person it was given to unless and until they receive it. And that's the biggest challenge. God has with humanity is getting men and women to receive what he's given. There's nothing wrong with the giver and there's nothing wrong with the gift. I'm going to know where the problems come in. On the receiving end. You can't control everybody, but you can sure control you and you can make up your mind. I'm a receiver and I'm a good receiver. Right? I'm a giver and I'm a receiver. And I'm as good at receiving as I am at giving. And I'm good at both. Because God helps me. <laughs> Listen to the 15th verse of this same 5th chapter. I'm reading the complete Jewish Bible now, the CJB. Verse 15. He said, CJB, but the free gift is not like the offense. He's drawing a contrast. And I've actually seen some things clearer on this than I've seen before just since last night. The free, everybody say the free gift. The free gift. Complete Jewish Bible, verse 15, chapter 5. is not like the offense. For if because of one man's offense many died, then how much more has God's grace that is the gracious gift of one man, Yeshua the Messiah, overflowed to many. No, the free gift. Everybody say free gift. free gift. The free gift is not like what resulted from one man sinning. For from one man, one sinner, came judgment that brought condemnation. But the free gift, somebody say free gift. Free gift. Third time he said it. Came after many offenses and brought acquittal. 
For if because of the offense of one man, death ruled through that one man, how much more will those receiving the overflowing grace, that is the gift of being considered righteous, rule in life through the one man, Yeshua or Jesus, the Messiah? Why? Because of the free gift. The free gift of forgiveness. The free gift of righteousness. The free gift, hallelujah, of cleansing. The free gift of redemption and freedom. The free gift of liberty. The free gift of authority in Jesus' name to rule and reign in life like a king. A king of the king of kings. Oh, somebody say, I receive receive the free gift. Free gift. gift. What's a free gift? Gave you a definition a little bit earlier. What's free? What's a gift? It's unearned and unrepaid. Come on, say that again. There's a reason why. What's, What's a true free gift? It's unearned and it's not repaid. Unearned and unrepaid. Elsewise, it's not truly a gift. It's not a free gift. Now, Romans 6.23, a a well-known scripture to many, brings this contrast. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death. What does wages mean? Pay. Pay. But, but means there's a contrast. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Listen to the New Living Translation. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. The New Century, listen to this, and I think it'll it'll drive the point home. New Century says, when people sin, they earn what sin pays. Death. But God gives us a free gift. This is not pay. Come on, do you see the contrast? When you sin, you get paid for sin. And to pay for sin is death. What, what Jesus came to give us is not pay. He's not giving us what we deserved. It's unearned. And it can't be paid back. But it's still given. Hallelujah. The God gives us a free gift. It's life forever. Instead of saying eternal life, it's forever life. It's the, it's the God quality of life and the God quantity of life. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Life with him. Knowing him throughout the ages to come. When you realize you're going to be around forever, it helps you relax. (laughs) Now you're not going to be down here in this body forever, but who wants to be? Somebody say, thank God God. for his indescribable, indescribable, inexpressible, inexpressible, precious, Free gift. Free gift. Too wonderful, Too wonderful. For, words. for words. Now see, if, we, if, we don't, if we're not effervescing or bubbling about how wonderful it is, it's because we don't realize how wonderful it is. We're oblivious. We're in the dark about it. But the more we realize what he's given us, we will be ecstatic. We will try to, we will go, it's wonderful, it's wonderful. And we'll talk in tongues and we won't be able to describe it. We won't be able to express it because it's so great, so wonderful, too wonderful for words. It's not something that's paid us. Sin gets its pay, which is death. But God has given us a free gift that we couldn't earn and we couldn't pay back. Did did you receive the gift? Do you receive the gift? Whether you're in here and you've never received him for the first time today or you're watching by the internet, man, you are at the right place at the right time. This is your day. And all you got to do is receive. 
Right? Amen. Now there, like we said, one of the biggest problems God has with humanity is people not receiving. And there are numerous reasons why, and all of them are wrong. <laughs> right? But think about what some people say. Someone is, going, is, is endeavoring to give you something. And it is something that's so expensive, something that's so huge, something that you feel like is too good for you. Hmm? Come on, are you are listening? You you have responses of both fear and, and self-degradation or pride. If you say, I can't, I just can't, I can't. I've had people tell me that before. There was a situation a number of years ago, uh, and I, I felt impressed to give something to somebody. And uh, I, I handed it, reached out to them. I said, I believe the Lord's dealt with me to, to give this to you. And, and they said, I, I just can't. I just can't receive that. I said, sure you can. You, you open your hand, and I'll put it there, and you close it, and you'll have it. Amen. That's it. That's right. And they said, no, I, I just can't. I just can't receive that. I said, why not? I, I just can't. I, it, it's expensive. It's this. It's that. Well, I, I tried to talk to them a little bit, but I saw their minds made up. They're not going to. And so uh, they didn't know it, but they angered me. Yeah. I didn't say anything to them about it. But you know, did I do this haphazardly? No. I mean, did it never occur to them? Maybe I actually prayed and heard from the Lord about this, <laughs> right? Amen. right? That's right. And I meant for it to be a representation of something substantial. Yeah. Hmm? And do they not, did it never cross their mind that maybe God was setting me up for a big harvest down the road, right? Yeah, and so they're denying me of my opportunity to sow and reap this. Can you see, so many things are wrong with this. I just can't. I can't. I can't. That's not even accurate. Don't say you can't. That's right. If you're going to say it right, you say I won't. Yeah. Right? Because you could if you would. <laughs> To say I just can't because of pride, because of fear, because of feeling unworthy is acting like the giver of the gift doesn't know the true value of it. Or that the giver of the gift doesn't realize he's wasting it on somebody who doesn't deserve it. What are you trying to tell them? No, that's too valuable. You should keep it. You don't know how valuable it is. Keep it. Keep it. Or, you don't want to waste it on me. I ain't worth it. Does God know what he's doing? Yes. Then he, when he gave this gift, he knew exactly what you and I were. Yes. And he knew he didn't deserve it. Yes. But he gave it anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. If he loved us that much, can you receive it anyway? Yes. Can you humble yourself yes. and receive it anyway? Romans eleven twenty nine 29 in the Amplified says, God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. He never withdraws them once they are given. He does not change his mind about those to whom he gives his grace or whom he sends his call. He doesn't change his mind. Somebody say, thank God he doesn't change his mind. He doesn't change his mind. <laughs> People say, well, I, I don't deserve it. Exactly. That's why it's a gift. Huh? It's, it's unearned. It's undeserved. And you can't pay it back. That's why it had to be a gift. It's not pay. People say, well, I, I, I could never pay you back. We're not asking you to. It's not a loan. It's a gift. Oh, God, how could I ever pay you for what you've done? He didn't ask you to pay. It's insulting to act like you might be able to. How could I ever repay you? You can't. Don't act like you could. The, the gift is too big. It's too great. <clears throat> I've, heard, I've heard people say this. It's just too much. It's just too big. It's just too much. To you, not to the giver. Hmm? Not to him. 
God knows the end from the beginning. He knows all kind of things you don't know and I don't know. And if in his great wisdom and knowing all of our failures and shortcomings and undeserving parts, if he still decided, I want you to have this and I'm going to give this to you, what remains for us but to bow our knee? Come on, are you listening? Hallelujah. And acknowledge, Lord, I don't, I don't deserve it, but I will receive it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I realize it is so precious. It could never be bought with money or silver or gold, and I could never repay it, but I can be thankful. Hallelujah. That's what humility does. That's what faith does. I will receive it, and I will never forget. Oh, come on, are you with me? I will never forget as long as I live what you have given me and what you've done for me. Hallelujah. What faith and humility will say, I don't earn it, I can't pay it back, but I won't waste it. It won't be wasted on me. Hallelujah. I will love you. I will follow you. I will serve you. You'll get some good fruit out of me. Not trying to pay it back. I can't pay it back. But just in response to your goodness to me. Just being thankful. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Amen. Come on, say it out loud. I will receive it. I will be thankful. I will never forget it. And I won't waste it. Hallelujah. How many believe this is a response that pleases God? This is the way you're supposed to respond to a gift that is too valuable, too precious, too wonderful for words. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Luke 18, 17, Jesus said, whoever will not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter Therein, you got to receive just like a little child. Little children are good receivers, right? You said no. Little means, uh, you know, not half grown, uh, a small, small child. Basically, one that's just old enough to realize what a gift is, but not much beyond that. And uh, you saw these little ones up here this morning. And uh, I was talking to a, a father just yesterday, asking about, was his children excited about Christmas? Oh, yeah. He said they've been wanting to try to peek at the ends of the box and try to shake them and figure out what it is. Well, do you think when the Christmas Eve or Christmas Day comes and it's time for them to receive the gifts, how many of these little ones do you think will back over in the corner and say, oh, I can't? I, I just, I just can't. How many? How many of these little ones will do that? How many? Come on. What did the Lord tell us about receiving? We need to be changed and become like a little child when it comes to receiving. Elsewise, you won't receive the things of the kingdom of God. How many of these little ones, you think, will actually open up something and realize that it's a very, very nice, expensive thing, and they'll just put it down and go, no, that's too nice for me. I, I, just, I just can't. Huh? How many little ones will do that? Well, that's the way little ones receive the way you're supposed to, according to Jesus. So when did we learn all this twisted stuff about I can't, it's too much, I'm sorry, I can't? Where, where did we learn that from? That's from being defiled in the world. Hmm? Amen. Through the years. That's picking up pride. That's picking up fear. That's picking up inferiority. God didn't give us that. God didn't give us the spirit of fear. Did he? He gave us the spirit of power and love and a sound. You know what that spirit will do? It will rip the paper off of that box and it'll pull it out and it'll say, that's mine. Is that right? It will not hesitate one moment. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha, 
Come on, practice, practice. Say, that's mine. That's mine. mine. I receive it. Thank you so much. How hard is that? How hard is that? It's just that easy to receive forgiveness for your sins. Hmm? Yeah, but you don't know what I've done. It doesn't matter what you've done. The gift is greater than what you've done. Yeah, but I can't repay it. Exactly. That's why it had to be a gift. Hmm? I don't deserve it. Exactly. That's why it had to be a gift. But can you receive it? Can you receive it? You can receive cleansing by the blood of the Lamb. You can receive your name written in the Lamb's book of life and a future with God and the people of God in heaven forever. All you got to do is receive it. Hmm? You've been sent the big box. Right? It's got your name on it. Will you receive it? Do you believe the great heart of the Father is just hovering over the whole earth desiring, receive it. Receive it from me. Right? People in such desperate need. People in such darkness. People in such death. Do you believe the heart of the Father is just reaching out to the whole planet saying, receive. Receive what I've given you. I've given you everything you'll ever need. Has he given us everything in Jesus? The Bible said, if God spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all? All things. I mean, if he gave you his only begotten son, he'll give you money to pay your electric bill. Is that right? Or a car or groceries. All those things pale in comparison. Is that right? When he gave you Jesus, he gave you everything. Because in him is life. In him is being received of the Father. Being made a part of the family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that we who were on the outside can now call him Father, Abba, Father, just like the Master himself. Didn't earn it, can't pay it back, but I can receive it. I said, I can receive it. Anybody in here beside me a receiver? Are you a receiver? Stand on your feet. Let's exercise it. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Lord. Put that back up on the screen, please. That uh, amplified of 2 Corinthians 9, 15. Oh, thank you, Lord. Say it out loud, everybody. And when you say it, think about who you're talking about. Is Jesus real? This wonderful thing that the children portrayed. Did that, is that a fairy tale? Huh? Did it happen? How did Jesus, excuse me, did Mary conceive a child? Do you believe? You hear people sometimes say today, well, now, you know, I, I believe in the teachings of Jesus as a good moral man, but do you actually expect me to believe he was born of a virgin without an earthly father? That's the only way it works. If you don't believe that, you can't be born again. You don't believe who, in who he is. You don't believe God is a God of miracles. It is a miracle. Anybody in here believe that miracle? It happened just like that. And the child was born, but the son existed long before that manger, right? And the son was given. Not for himself, He hadn't committed sin. He didn't need any redemption. Everything he did was for us. Hallelujah. And so he lived and then he went to the cross. And he did not go there to pay any penalty for his mistakes and wrong. The Bible said on him, the sins of us all were laid. Right? And he rose from the dead free from all of that, purchasing our righteousness and our holiness. And the Bible said his blood, gift given, the gift of his blood, the gift of eternal life is on the mercy seat. And it is speaking forever that those who have faith in this blood 
are righteous in the eyes of God. Those who have faith in this blood are saved and have eternal life. Is that you? I said, is that you? Lift up your hands. Say it out loud, Father God. I thank you for your gift. Precious beyond telling. Thank you for your indescribable, inexpressible, free gift. Hallelujah.